Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're gonna look how we can start the Boeing 7478 and then take off from uh, an airport. In this case uh, Joint Base Andrews which is uh, the home airport of Air Force One. So I select also Air Force One. You can see the for some reason the, the call sign is in mirrors on one of the sides of the airplane. So let's go inside the airplane and let's start the engines. So to start the engines we need to go to the roof of the airplane. So and that's here. And that's where you will find the batteries. So we can open the battery card and switch on the battery master. Besides that you've got the options to switch on the external power uh, if available. But if you click it, or if you zoom over it, you will see, okay, hey, it's unavailable. You can click it, but it will, of course, not work. If it's available, you can select them, and then you will be able to uh, use the batteries or the cables, uh, which prevent uh, draining the battery. So once that's done, uh, it's time to, let say, also switch on the beacon, or the navigation lights can also be switched on, depending on what you prefer. And make sure that you switch on the APU. Now, you might ask, okay, why do we need to switch on the APU? Well, if we don't start the APU, then we can't switch on the engines. After that, we need to ensure that the fuel pumps are running. And in 747, they are, or there are a lot of fuel pumps. So it's a lot of clicking. And you will have the option to switch off the fuel cross feed. And the cross feed simply means if, for example, the left side of the airplane has a little bit more fuel compared compared to the right, you can uh, switch on the fuel X feed, and it will ensure that the uh, fuel will flow from not only to engine one in this case, but also to engine two. Uh, and you can do the same thing for engine from engine two, uh, sorry, from engine one to engine two and from engine one to engine three, etc. Right. So, but we will leave it as is. There's no need to, to change this part. So, then we've got the, bu the buttons here and the buttons here are used to switch on the engines. So you can uh, switch it to uh, on and you can do it either engine by engine or you can switch on all engines. I think the official order is switching on engine four, then engine one, and then engine three, and then engine two. Uh, let's also make sure that the uh, standby uh, power is set to auto. In that case, it will switch on if needed. If not, it will uh, not switch on. And you can see that by default, the generators are already switched on for the engine, so you don't have to make any modifications there. So that's good. So as you can see, the airplane has several screens. On the left side, we can see the speed and the altitude and the horizon. In this case, the, the touch and go and also the V1, uh, which is the speed where V1 is uh, rotating and it will call out the V1. Here's the, um, yeah, what, what is it? The radar view from the, the airport. So we currently see where we're located and you can all see, okay, these are the routes that we need to take. And when we're moving a little bit to the right side or in the center, here's where the engines are. So you can see that the uh, gears down, um, flaps are set to zero because else you will see them here. And the engine of course has not been switched on. To do that, we need to go to the part where the throttles are. So you need to make sure that your throttles are in, I would say, a zero uh, or in neutral. So you don't uh, depart directly when you start the engines. Um, to power up the engines, you will need to set this button to run. So once you did that, you will see that normally the values will increase here. If that doesn't happen, like in my case, in most cases you forgot something to do. So let's double check again what we need to do. So this is set to run, which is okay. Now 
then let's go to the top because in most cases you will have forgot something to switch on on the top. So fuel pumps are on. Generators, we don't need to switch them on. This is fine. This is also fine. These are all set to on. So if you don't know what to do, there's always the help of the checklist, right? So you can open the checklist and you can uh, view the options here. So you're gonna check it, double check. This is set to on, it's set to auto. External is not available, so we can't switch it on. This is set to on. These were not set to on. So probably that's uh, that's the issue. So let me make sure that we're enabling the, those options. So in the meantime, let's check if the rust has been enabled. And that's the case, right? So the fuel pumps have been enabled. Beacon has been enabled. And if you listen very carefully, you already hear one of the engines uh, starting. So. Let's go to the other display here. And you'll see that it is already starting. So you can see the values going up. So if you don't give the engine fuel, then it will stay stuck around 2.5. So if you want to, I would say, make the next step to the engine, you can switch on the fuel so it will get fuel and it will start the engine. As soon as that happens, you can also see that the flow uh, goes into the engine. So the engine gets its fuel. So let's also do the same thing for engine one. And as soon as we did that, you see that the value starts to increase here. And also here. And if we would go down here, you can see that it gets its fuel again. So let's do the same thing for engine uh, number three and engine number two. And if we would now go to the outside of the airplane, And we would zoom in a bit. You will see that the engines are switched on, right? You see that the the, the heat comes out of the engines. And if we would whoop, turn a bit, you will see that the engine is uh, speeding up. This one is a little bit slower, almost the same speed. So that's all fine. So now the engines have started. Uh, the next thing is that we need to uh, configure the rest of the airplane. So we leave this as is, right? So, or you can follow the action plan here. Uh, one thing to, to keep an eye on is that after you start the engines and after the engines are running, you need to switch off the APU, APU selector. So let, let's do that first. Switch to off. Engines are stable. So everything is green. So no error messages. So that's good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that everything is configured correctly here. So the models displayed here. The navigation data is also displayed here. So that's the navigation data. Uh, the engines. Uh, all those buttons which you see on the, this side are not I would say functioning, although you can click on them and nothing happens. Except the index, which will bring you back to the index, or the post in it. And the post in it allows you to configure several things. You can define uh, the location where you are. As you can see, the GPS position is already there, but the IRS is not there. And how to populate it is pretty easy. You press this button, then you will see that it will put in your position here, and then you will push it here. So you push this button and it will show you the same location as where the GPS currently is. So the airport, uh, well, one way to find out is by using the VFR map, right? So uh, this is the um, airport uh, code. So we can punch it in. So Kilo Alpha Delta Whiskey. And we press the button here. 
This will make sure that the airport is being set as the uh, refresh point. So that's also done. So next thing is to set up the route. So again, we need to push in the location where we currently are. Optionally, you can set the runway from which you're uh, departing, but we're not going to do that yet. And what you see is that when you uh, configure the origin, it also sets the destination to the same airport. Uh, if you want to change it, you can do that. And the way to do it is by um, providing another code of another airport. Well, let's have a look. Uh, so, for example, if we want to fly to... Uh, where shall we fly to today? Let's make it easy for ourselves. I'm gonna close this window and I'm gonna uh, provide Echo Hotel Alpha Mike, which is Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. Sometimes you need to type it in twice. Or wait a little. As you can see, it has been populated here. So the next thing you're gonna do is you can configure the flight number. Uh, so, um, sure it will accept this don't think so no because the reason is you need to provide numeric numbers always forget to do that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear it and we're gonna say uh, well we do one two three four just as a just as an example and we press the button here go route uh, what you can do is you can configure an alternate route if something is not a goes wrong on the uh, primary route you can select an alternate route but we're not gonna do it uh, for now and we're gonna uh, send a request and then select the perf init button the perf init button will show you a lot of things it shows you the cruise altitude it shows you the uh, view which is in the airplane uh, it also shows you the reserves so how much is left uh, or how much do you want to uh, leave in the uh, in the um, say fuel tanks when you reach the destination uh, you can configure it if it's, it's not strictly necessary to do it uh, some other flight sims are automatically configuring it and the cost index and the cost index is okay how I would say uh, cost effective is your flight so I saw numbers of 25 being punched in so I'll punch it in here sure it will accept it 250 maybe doesn't work v2 no it works in the other airplanes it works in the uh, 787 and in the airbus so for now we will leave it and we're gonna go to the uh, trust limit so on the top left that's the flaps so they're set to 20 degrees um, you can accept the settings here or you can change it uh, takeoff speed is 87.9% uh, of the N N1 and what's the N1? well let me show you the N1 is being displayed here and if we would increase speed or increase the throttle let me, you can see that those values are increasing uh, of course we want to protect the engines a bit so this is the maximum speed it, uh, it does so it sets it, it sets it to 87.9%. Uh, that should be the takeoff speed. Should be enough. Uh, so besides the takeoff speed, so you've got takeoff one, 10% uh, and 20%, and then you've got the climb, uh, climb one and climb two. We will leave them as is, and then we're gonna t go to takeoff. You can see that the flaps are not populated here, so uh, I will set the flaps to to 20. Uh, you can also set them to, to 10. You will find uh, different values being used if you search on the internet to uh, which configuration flaps need to be set. It also depends on the um, length of the runway. So if it's a very short runway, you might need to do more flaps because then you can uh, gain more lift, right? So it will go earlier up in the air. 
let's say. And then we've got the V1, so that's the call sign when it's V1 is rotating, rotating that's at uh, 176 knots. Then at 188, it's VR, and then at 209, uh, it says V2. So around VR, you can push back the stick and uh, get the airplane uh, in the air. Uh, wind, uh, slope trim, we don't configure it, also not sure what it really means but probably it has to do something with the wind uh, throttle reduction when do we need to reduce the throttling uh, uh, the weather conditions or the runway conditions so you can see that I just had to dry probably also wet is an option uh, let's try it maybe it works <laughs> no it doesn't accept it okay we will leave it as it is and then continue with the thrust limit uh, thrust limit, we already went to it because this is the next stop or this is the option prior to takeoff. It shows you uh, the flaps, the takeoff speed, and then shows you the different climb phases. So you can say climb, or you can set climb one or climb two. Um, there's not much more which you can configure here um, based on what I found out. So, what's in it? more than this well you've got the uh, departure and arrival which we already set so departure uh, shows uh, Andrew Airbase and destination is uh, Amsterdam Airport so you can uh, press the uh, departing airport and based on that you can uh, select a runway but that that's of course that's something you can do once you know which runway you're gonna take off or Probably when you use, uh, submit your air plan, you will have a certain uh, runway in mind which you want to use. So we will leave it for now. So, uh, and the same thing you can do that for um, the uh, destination airport. So you can use the star route, right? So the terminal route and the approach. So the approach which you want to use, and then it will set up the um, flight plan correctly for you uh, if you want. Uh, currently ATC uh, uh, VNAV uh, can't be used so there there's nothing you can can do with it um, there, there there might be an option which we need to discuss because I didn't explain it yet some of the pages have or some of the screens have multiple pages so you can navigate to them using the previous and next page um, when looking at the climb screen we see two things here appearing so there's the uh, 100 FL which stands for the 10,000 feet and the speed at that specific uh, altitude so it's 250 it's fine if we would go to the next page then we will see some more information the N1 um, so what's the N1 speed um, some other options uh, which we're not gonna uh, use in this case and then the destination so if we're gonna um, come closer to our destination we will drop the speed a bit um, you can uh, request a forecast currently it doesn't work as far as i found out so you can probably better sign into the ATIS channel of an airport uh, to request okay hey what's the weather what's the active runway etc um, fix doesn't work currently uh, lags normally shows the lags which we're gonna use so the uh, waypoints which we're gonna use for navigation again we only set up a departing and arrival airport so it will not be shown here uh, holds not used FMC com also not uh, proc also not uh, the navigation radio uh, this might be useful right if you're gonna do an ILS approach then you can uh, configure the uh, ILS frequency here if you want to configure the navigation radios you can also configure them manually here by punching on the numbers and then uh, selecting the options on the left side or the right side and you've got the execute button so if you press the execute button uh, then it will uh, execute all the configurations you did uh, also if you made a change to the flight plan don't forget to press the execute button because it will uh, else will not update the plan so now the airplane is ready for takeoff or ready for departure we of course need to uh, contact uh, 
the tower and ask for clearance. So we're gonna do an IFR clearance. Andrews clearance delivery United States one two three four IFR to skip call ready to copy. United States one two three four is cleared to skip call airport is filed. Take off runway one left climb and maintain seven thousand feet. Departure frequency is one two five decimal six five squawk zero five three five. So then we're gonna confirm it. United States one two three four cleared to skip hall airport is filed. Take off runway one left climb and maintain seven thousand feet. Departure on one two five decimal six five squawk zero five three five. So United States one two three four rate back direct. Contact ground on one two one decimal eight. So before contacting ground, we're gonna set up the autopilot. So the autopilot has a lot of options. So the options which we are gonna enable is the flight director, which will ensure that we're taking a specific um, climb rate once we're taking off. Uh, we're gonna set the max speed, right? So auto throttle was enabled by default, so it's, we leave it set to 200. Uh, depending on what you want, is you can switch on uh, LNAV and VNAV. LNAV is uh, uses the navigation point which you configured to navigate and uh, VNAV is using the altitudes configured uh, with those waypoints right you can say okay on waypoint 1 I want to be at 10,000 feet waypoint 2 I want to be at 15,000 feet uh, this will ensure that it will uh, I would say increase or decrease the speed or altitude I should say sorry now we've got the uh, flight control mode which can be used if you change the altitude and you want to make sure that you're climbing with a certain speed, you can use the flight control mode. Uh, then we've got the heading here, and the heading um, mode can be activated by pressing this button, and can be changed, of course, by moving it either left or right. Uh, if you want to uh, make sure that it's synchronized with the current heading, then press this button, which will synchronize it, uh, and also switch on the heading option. So. We'll leave it as is for now. Vertical vertical speed. This allows you to set a certain climb or descent rate. Uh, you need to switch on this option and using this, uh, say, button or uh, yeah, button is it? You can increase or decrease the vertical speed. And then we've got the altitude. And as we just heard, we need to go to 7,000 feet. So we're gonna uh, switch the button to the left, set it to 7000 and we're gonna uh, not directly push the button yet uh, so we're gonna use the, the uh, flight control option uh, when once the uh, autopilot is enabled. Then we've got two options here which are the uh, localizer mode and the approach mode uh, that's used for uh, locking on the localizer or when you are approaching an airport you can switch on the approach mode uh, to use for example the ILS uh, as approach and then here are the most important points or buttons uh, these are the buttons to switch on the autopilot and you only need to switch on one of them uh, as far as I found out so with this I think we're all set so we can contact ground and ask for uh, taxi permission Ground United States 1234 with Echo ready to taxi IFR. United States 1234 taxi to Israel short of runway 1 left by attack the way Alpha. Contact tower on 118 decimal. All when ready. So we're gonna proof. Taxi to and hold short runway when left using taxiway Alpha United States 1234. So that's done. So now one of the tricky things with the Boeing is that sometimes you can't make the turn, right? So you can, if we would zoom around the airplane, you can see, okay, hey, we can go to the back and then make the turn to the left. So let's ask for pushback. And to do that, we're gonna contact ground services and request pushback. Andrews Ground, United States, one, two, three, four, requesting pushback. 
Sometimes happens there's no pushback truck. Andrews Ground United States 1234 requesting pushback. Andrews Ground United States 1234 no pushback truck is available to answer your request. So looks like that there's no <laughs> truck available for us. So we're gonna do it a different way. So How to do that? Well, the first thing be before we really start taxiing, I almost forgot it, is we're gonna uh, set the departing uh, one way. Uh, so let's open the window again. And what we needed to do is we needed to use one way one left. So we're gonna select departure, one left, and then we're gonna say execute. Nothing has changed here. Reason why we didn't select a specific, um, say, star route. You can do that. So right, so we can say, hey, uh, select uh, one left, and then use also, uh, for example, uh, this star route. And sometimes you will find it here. So in this case, when you sl select it might show it but not always it's always a surprise you know, this, is com this is going straight to Amsterdam so and then we will press execute and then we're gonna say okay this is fine execute again and now you see that it has added several uh, waypoints to the list. So that's fine for now. So now to the um, how to, I would say, go back. So go in reverse mode. But the first thing you need to do is you need to remove the uh, parking brakes. And if you don't have a joystick which allows the uh, decrease of throttling, uh, you can sometimes uh, switch back these buttons. Um, so what you need to do is you need to do it a little bit careful and the tricky thing here is also that you don't watch what's gonna happen so let's also do that to see what's happening so probably we need to push them a little bit more so let's also let the other engines do some work. And here you can see the airplane is slowly moving to the back. Always keep in mind that there might be something behind you. Uh, you will not be the first person who hits something else and then a flight simulator of course crashes. So we will leave it as is let's fly around the airport the airplane it must be pretty difficult for let's say a real pilot to find out okay uh, without a talk uh, how to make the uh, correct route so once you're happy push the parking brake little bit bumpy so remove it so <laughs> watch out because uh, some other persons might decide also to uh, leave and one of the things in the uh, Boeing is that it, as soon as you remove the parking brake it will start to say taxi not that fast really slow And you can see that we might need to take a different route here because you can see that there are a lot of uh, small airplanes parked so we're gonna
increase throttling a bit. Co compared to the, I would say, what is, is it the Boeing 787? Um, turning the aircraft goes pretty easy. Uh, with the Boeing 787 it goes pretty hard and that's where you can use the left and right brake for. Uh, that's uh, you can well find them uh, if you kept the default um, assignments to the keyboards or the mappings uh, the star is the left brake and the minus key is the uh, right brake and you heard me already talk about ATIS so what you can do is if you want to know for example the weather you can contact ATIS Zero, give you zero, some zero. nice information one about the conditions. So there's a lot of information, right? So we're gonna move to the uh, ground again. So it gives you information about okay, the active runways, also how to um, say take off, if you're flying VFR, what the instructions are, it provides you information about the weather, it provides information about okay how cloudy it was, uh, or is, I would say. Um, and now we're on our way to runway. We need to be a little bit careful because there's a small airplane in front of us. And you can see, due to the fact that I uh, switched on the option to show the runways, it will give us a helper uh, which shows us okay where the runway is. Um, if you want to do it, I would say the hard way, you can always use the uh, signs which are located on the airport. And here we go. So there are some, I would say, some mixed things on the internet about setting the flaps either before taxiing or after taxiing. Uh, so what we will do is we will set them, I would say, prior to going on to the runway. Uh, as already discussed, we're going to set them to uh, 20 degrees. So look left and right. Nice bus. I'm gonna increase throttling again. And one of the the, the other things which the uh, ATS told us was the uh, altimeter, right? So currently it's set to uh, let me watch out still goes okay that's uh, being set uh, here I'll point it out with my mouse it's set to the 2992 and if you want to correct it you can press the letter B on the keyboard uh, make sure you set it correctly because if you don't do it correctly then uh, for example if you set an altitude of 10,000 feet then air traffic control will start to complain and say you're not following the instructions you're too low or you're too high in most cases if that's the case make sure that you set the altimeter correctly because that will fix it because then you will see it either dropping or increasing the altitude and then the autopilot if you use it uh, will correct it of course Always nice to have a small airplane in front of us. We'll increase the recording time of this video, so let's see what else we can discuss uh, while slowly taxiing to the runway. Yeah, you can see that currently it we're here, right? So it shows you the direction of the, the airport, uh, or the map of the airport. So the other airplane goes to the other side, so that's good for us.
Um, one of the things you might want to change is you might want to change the uh, range of the um, display. So currently it's set to uh, 0 0.25. You can also zoom out. And of course also zoom in if you want. Move the mouse over there. Can I increase speed a bit? And as you can see, due to these uh, purple uh, characters, it said, okay, hey, the maximum speed is set to 200 knots, and the altitude has been set to uh, 7,000 feet. So we're almost there. Push the brake a bit. A little bit too far to the raw to the right side. Wait here, and then we're gonna contact the tower. So we're gonna request takeoff. Andrews Tower, United States, one two three four, ready to go runway one left IFR to skip hall. United States, one two three four, cleared for takeoff runway one left. So we're cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff runway one left United States one two three four. So we're gonna increase speed a bit. Make the turn. So we're correctly aligned to the runway. gonna put on the parking brakes uh, because we need to set the flaps and the flaps can either be set uh, manually by pulling the button here or using the button here or if you've got a joystick you can also use that so again what's set we set it to 10 or to 20 sorry and as soon as we did that so let's fly around Ooh. Airplane. Push the wrong button. You will see that the uh, flaps have uh, moved in the correct position. So you can see that they're now extended, like here. See the paint is a little bit removed. So let's go inside the airplane again. To the central view. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some pressure on the engines just to ensure that we're I would say having enough traction to depart and then we're gonna remove the throttle or sorry remove the parking brake and we're gonna increase throttle case to full speed sometimes when you're not correctly aligned like me then you need to steer the airplane a bit and one of the things which is also documented is that you need to push the stick forward to prevent that the aircraft is gonna go airborne v1. and once it's v1 so now it's time to pull back the stick and we're in the air.
Oh shit. Going to one two five decimal six five United States one two three four. Before doing that, we're gonna switch on the autopilot because, as you can see, the aircraft climbs heavily. And you can either do that by uh, using the joystick, which you have, or you can do it by using the buttons here. Uh, keep in mind that in this case we didn't set a specific uh, heading. So it will start uh, moving to the heading which is currently set. Uh, if you first want to fly with, say, straight out, and then you, it's better to, when you are aligned on runway, first set the heading and then uh, use that heading as the initial heading for um, say flying uh, once you're happy and once you want to use the navigation States, you can switch on the whole nav option feet for 7, feet. and the LNAV option will use the uh, route which we configured in our flight plan right so we go to our flight plan still here so it will simply gonna navigate to uh, these waypoints and then uh, once it has uh, completed page one it will go to the next page um, it will eventually bring us to to Amsterdam so as you can see we forgot to pull up the gears so let's also do that see that it's gonna make a weird move there once it's in there so that's good uh, you probably know what we forgot to do we forgot to switch on the flight control mode the flight control mode will ensure that we're taking the correct speed but it'll also make sure that we're I would say not going too high or too low so it's gonna decrease our speed now to 7,000 feet and it will United increase States, our speed one, two, three, four, did you hear my last transmission? so we're gonna acknowledge traffic controls Descend and maintain 7, feet, United States, one, message two, three, four. and once you're at the correct altitude you will see also some options here in the speedometer and here it says okay hey you can set the flaps to 20 and as soon as we reach this speed you can set them to a lower uh, knob so to for example to, to 10 or to even lower it's not strictly necessary but up to here you can set it to 20 if you're going faster then you need to set them to 10 uh, if you're going too fast it uh, might cause some damage to your flaps so be aware of that So now we're airborne, it's pretty cool, so the airplane will do its stuff. Um, keep in mind there are certain things which you need to do uh, during your flight, uh, for example uh, when we go to the uh, lights, you can switch on additional lights like the navigation. Navigation is mandatory, uh, same thing for the wings uh, logo and the stroboscope, uh, the runway, a taxi and landing lights are not strictly required only when doing of course the uh, takeoff and landing procedures uh, that's also one thing we didn't do in our case um, in case you're flying on a high altitude it could be very cold make sure that you don't forget to switch on the anti-icing if you don't do it you will see all kind of snow uh, or an ice popping up on your wings I had it once, so when flying uh, with a uh, flight simulator in, uh, I think it was in Canada, it was pretty cold. And there it uh, was going uh, crazy and it was very cold. The airplane was almost white. So here you can see some nice piece of uh, Washington, right? So the Pentagon. So with this, we're also done with the how to. to Let's say start the Boeing 747 and also take off with it. Um, hope you liked it. If you liked this video, then consider to use the uh, like button. If you've got questions or comments, then use the questions or comments below the video. 
And if you'd like to see more of these videos and want to stay up to date about new videos being posted, then consider to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.